of forces that are at work right here in this world where we are. There's only two of them. And here's the thing with both of them. We can't stand against either one of them. We have no power in ourselves. Those are, these are forces that are outside of this world, outside of our knowledge, outside of our understanding. One of them is a force of light through God, and one of them is a force of darkness through Satan. We see these, saw these forces kind of acted out, didn't we, this morning? Listen to Ephesians as has been read already this morning. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, which you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of this utter darkness. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And you will be able, or excuse me, and above all, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all power and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and as for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries, the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. That in it I may, be, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this day. You have your will, your work, your way. Holy Spirit, you move for your glory. Amen. A couple of things we just, a couple of things we just want to notice throughout this verse, through this scripture. These two powerful forces that we have, we need to know this. No matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, these forces are at work. There's two of them that's working. There was two of them working up here that you saw. There was one from God and the other one from the dark things, the evil of this world, which comes from Satan himself. He was a created being. He was a holy angel at one time, but pride lifted itself up, and he became an unholy angel. And as he was an unholy angel, one-third of all of the holy angels followed him and became unholy angels. Does that make sense? That is the force that is at work in this world today. Not just God, but it's the force of unholy angels, ungodliness, unrighteousness, wickedness in this world that is at work is a powerful force that I can't stand against, you can't stand against, no one in this world can, but only Jesus can stand against those forces because he's the force of light that brings light into us that we can stand in an evil day. Does that make sense? This is the... The only way we're going to make it through this world is to have the light of Christ in us. Does that make sense? All this stuff that was going on up here, you know what? Some of us have been through that, haven't we? Some of us have been through the drinking, haven't we? Some of us have been through some addictions. Some of us have been through some hopelessness in our lives that we may have wanted to take our lives. Some of y'all may be like that now. You may think it's hopeless. That life is hopeless. You've got nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. Jesus is hope. Jesus is life. Jesus is light. He is the one that can take all that wickedness, hold it back from you, that you can serve him and have a life. Does that make sense? Not just for them, but all of us. There's two people out here. There's two people in this place right now. There's some that are believers and some are unbelievers. Some love God and some hate God. Now, which are we in? 
have, have these four, or what, what's that work in our lives with these forces of wick, wickedness that we come up against? What's going on in your life right now? What is happening? Whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, I'm going to tell you what's happening. The wickedness is trying to overtake you. It's trying to get you. That's what this world is about. Look at this struggle that we're going through. We may, un may not understand all, all the things of it. You may not understand what's going on in your life. But as we read right here in Ephesians, he says this, our struggle is not against what? Flesh and blood. One person out here knows the Bible. That's great. I'm just teasing. Our struggle is not a... Y'all know that, didn't you? Y'all just wasn't saying it. The struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against one another. Listen, our struggle is not against the government. Our struggle is not against the president. Our struggle is against things that are out of this world. Our struggle is against the wickedness and the darkness that people are in. That is in control of this world. That's what we struggle with. That's what tries to pull us in. That's what tries to grab a hold on us. This is what that struggle does. This is how wickedness operates in our life. It's got a chokehold on us. It chokes us down and sucks the life out of us. That's what Christ came to give us. He came to give us life. Why? Because the wickedness of this world has choked us. He says we don't struggle against flesh and blood. You know what struggle means? I thought it was great. Pastor, he got to go speak with some wrestling guys. Uh, this week, uh, 14 different schools, I think, or 14 different teams. But that's an awesome thing to do. And he was talking about the struggle that they have. Wrestlers, it's a, it, that struggle is a wrestling term. Back there in, in the day, I don't know if they do it now with wrestling, but whenever Paul was speaking, talking about this wrestling, you know how you knew when somebody gave up? One of either two ways. Either they were dead or they just couldn't move. So Paul's saying, in this struggle, we don't struggle against flesh and blood, but we struggle against the wickedness of this world. This struggle means somebody has you down in submission, on the ground, with their hands around your throat, strangling the life out of you. Does that make sense? Have you been there? And for some of us, it was at that very moment that Jesus come on the scene. See, he had to come and do it because we can't. Because it's a supernatural force at work, a force of wickedness that had me down, and I couldn't do anything. But the greatest force in the world, the force of light, of godliness, came in and saved me, which is in Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's who he is. That's what he does. He's the only way. He's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that can beat our struggles. He's the only one that can breathe life into us. He's the only one that has power over Satan, over the forces of evil, over the darkness of this world. Does that make sense? Because let me tell you something. In John, it says this. Don't, don't take my word for it. Look in your Bible. John says this. He says that everybody was born in darkness. I was? Yep. Born in darkness. You know, I was, at one time, I wasn't the one on ground, you know, on the ground trying to get a breath of air. I was the one keeping people from Jesus. I was born that way. I was born a hater of God. I was born against every good, the good thing that he is. I was born against the light of the world, and I was keeping people from God. Let me tell you something. If you're an unbeliever right now, and you're hearing this message, you're, you're standing, you're keeping people from Jesus. That's a hard word, ain't it? Guys in our Sunday school lesson, it was good this morning. It was kind of piggybacking off of that. Listen, two people in this world. There's those that are following light, those that are falling in darkness. We all began in darkness. What does John 3.16 says this? But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But verse 17 says this, because he didn't come into the world to condemn the world because the world was already condemned. Because they were in darkness. Their deeds were dark, their hearts were dark, everything about them was dark. They were wicked, they were evil, ungodly. And they were keeping everyone else away from Jesus. But at the right time, at the right time, Jesus comes, born of a virgin, born to forgive man of their sin, born to die on a cross, born to take my ungodliness and nail it to a cross, and born to be raised from the dead to give us everlasting life. Yes. Life, not death. That's a great thing. Do you have life? 
Do you have everlasting life this morning? Or are you still in darkness? Man, why you want to ask that, man? Because I care about your soul. I care about your soul. I don't believe all that. Don't matter what we believe sometimes. What matters is the truth. The Bible has been around for some 2,000 years, and people want to say, well, it didn't, it wasn't, it's just, a, it's just man's word. It's not man's word. It's God's word because it's been around and stayed together ever, ever since the canon was written. Ever since four, 5,000 years ago. It's all been put together. God has been keeping records and keeping account of what things have done. So he knew that we right here would come to this point in our lives. We wouldn't know God if he hadn't told us who he is. He told, he tells us who he is in his word and it is true and that's why I don't like it. When I was in darkness, this is the one thing I did not want to hear. But now it's the only thing that keeps me going because it tells me how far short I come, but then it tells me about the grace of God in Jesus Christ. I struggle with the forces of this world. They're trying to keep me away from Christ, but he comes and he keeps drawing me in. He keeps pulling me back to him, and when I've had enough, when he's got me on the ground and I can't breathe again, listen, he comes right there and he gives me a chance to we might be unbelievers. We may need him to come and get us a breath of life. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, are you gasping for air? Are you confused right now, not knowing which way to go, what to do, where to turn? Maybe you're thinking about things that's going on in your life that you're just tired of, sick of. Maybe some friends at school or something, you know, trying to pull you and get you to do some wrong things that you know is wrong. I don't know how I was with some of my guys. <laughs> some of y'all back there, you know, when we get together, teenagers, we just kind of go with the, what the crowd does. I, we don't want to stand up, do we? Sometimes when we get into young adulthood, I don't know, 40, 50 years old, sometimes we still have that same problem going on. <laughs> All right? Hey, we... <laughs> We got to come out of darkness at some time. You know what I'm saying? The head to the light. Is God working and moving in your heart this morning? If you never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're working for Satan. You're working for the wicked force in this world. But I'm saved. I still feel like all this stuff is going on there. Yeah, that's the other group of us here, isn't it? When you get saved, sometimes all those the evil gets worse. Pulls you worse. Tries to keep you down worse. But he says our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the principalities and powers of this world. The, the wickedness in heavenly places. But he says this. Look at us in verse 11. He says, put on the whole arm of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we, in verse 12, for we. So listen, this passage was written to believers. And why you spent so much time talking to about unbelievers? Because I want you to be a believer. Because if you're a believer, you're going to be able to stand against the wiles and the thing that's going against you. What do you mean? Because our advocate, our intercessor, Jesus Christ, is before the throne of God praying for us. So Paul says, writes back to the Ephesians, to those in the body of Christ there, those who have saved, who have been bought by the blood of Christ, he says, and we, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. Does that make sense? So as believers, you mean we're going to have this struggle? Yes. It wasn't much of a struggle as an unbeliever because the chokehold was on us and we didn't know what life was. But now we've come to the light of Jesus Christ. We know what living is and we know where our life comes from. And when the, the wickedness, when sin takes in, gets into our lives and the, the forces of wickedness begin to draw us and get us further and further and further away from Christ, we have these promises. Galatians says this, that through faith, in, when we believed in Christ, 
we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. Well, what does that mean? You've been stamped and you've been marked. You are God's and nobody's going to take that away. Hell won't overcome you. Overcome you. Wickedness won't take care of you. Only Jesus is now. But things happen. Why does it get so, hap- Why does it get so bad? Why does it happen so long? Because sometimes I don't want to come to Christ for direction and for God. Does that make sense? Sometimes those, what were they like, eight guys up here, six, eight guys up here? Each of them had a different thing coming out. So how many of us are kind of attached to material stuff? All we're hungry for is more money or stuff. Houses, cars, and lands and things like that. What about for uh, like things that, what kind of addictions do we have? Well, that's a tough one. Yeah, alcohol, crack, cocaine, gambling, eating. No, we ain't going there. We fixing to do that. Uh Uh-uh. We ain't going with eating. But hey, listen, there are things that have us, doesn't it? We don't have it. It has us. But here's the greatest thing about it. It doesn't matter how long we've been addicted to things. It doesn't matter how much hold those things have on us. Jesus Christ can break that habit. He can break that addiction. And this is what he does. We want to look around at one another and say, look where they've been. Look what they've gone through. You can't trust them. This. When Jesus Christ forgives somebody, when they turn and they repent and they come back to him, he forgives them flat out. He takes that sin and casts it as far as the east is from the west. And we need to restore one another like that. We need to be beside one another like that, don't we? Lift them up. What do you mean? That's keeping the evil, wicked forces of this world off their back for just a little while. And God can use us to help keep the wickedness back. Does that make sense? This is why he's writing to the Ephesians. He says, you're all wrestling against a force that you can't handle, but you need to follow me. You need to serve me, and I will protect you. Do you need protection this morning? These forces are hard. These forces are wicked, guys. When y'all go back to school, when y'all leave here, and and, you know, you're around your friends and things like that, do you need help? Need somebody in there to help you? Christ is always there for you. He's always there with you. He's the only one that knows how to overcome Satan. Does that make sense? Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but is against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, put on the whole armor. that you may be able to stand in that evil day. So the guys are going to come up. We're going to have an invitation of him. If y'all are, uh, if y'all are ready, uh, I guess we uh, plan to do that. All right. We're going to have an invitation of him. Here's the invitation. If you don't 